kids! Welcome to another episode on the Beatitudes, where we explore and learn more about how we can be better disciples of Christ. It's incredible how you share your artwork with us week after week. Thank you, Marina, for wanting to strive to be honest to reach God. Aiden, we can definitely feel your love for Jesus. We are always amazed at how inspiring your sharings are. Do keep them coming. Last week, we learned about the sixth beatitude. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Did you manage to stay close to Jesus to keep your hearts pure and clean? I hope you did, because when we do, we can see God much better in the people around us and through the events of our lives. Do you know what it means to be a peacemaker? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Before we find out what this means, let's first begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, who gives us peace that the world cannot give. Holy Spirit, help us to bring Jesus' peace to those we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing to Jesus, our Redeemer, who has saved us from our sins.
Hi kids and welcome back. Get ready to learn more about the Word of God today. Join us as we find out what it means to be a peacemaker. Hey John, how was school? Uh, okay, my teacher praised me today for being a peacemaker. That sounds so encouraging. Aren't you happy? I, I really didn't do anything special. I only did what Jesus told us to do. What Jesus told us to do? Do you mean like in the Beatitudes? Do you know what John and Nicole are talking about? They are referring to the Beatitude in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peace is the opposite of war. Jesus tells us that if we want to live as happy children of God, then we must make peace. But before we can give peace, we must have peace. Where can we find this peace? This peace can only be found in Jesus Christ. He came to save us from our sins, to make peace between God our Father and us. You don't need to be someone famous or special to be a peacemaker. You just need to have the courage and humility to live as a child of God. So what do you do to make your teacher notice you? Sabine accidentally took Joy's pencil. But Joy thought Sabine had stolen it because they looked the same. They even started to argue. Oh, that must have been awful. Yeah, I had to do something. So I calmed them down and got them to talk it out. And the truth was revealed. Yep. And they shook hands and made peace with each other. That's really good of you. I remember those times when you were quarreling with your brother over where to sit before online mass started. It could have gone on if you didn't decide to give up your seat. Thankfully, we could attend mass in peace. I almost forgot about that. Do you see that what you think are the little things you do as a peacemaker has such a big impact on everyone? Hmm, I get it now. I will continue to do my best as a peacemaker and as a child of God. I wonder what the world would be like if everyone lived in peace. I'm sure that's what the kingdom of God is like. Let's ask Jesus to send down His kingdom here on earth.
Today, we learned that as peacemakers, we bring the peace of Christ to others. We can be peacemakers by treating others the way we would like to be treated. It is not always easy to be a peacemaker, especially if our parents or our siblings are quarrelling. But we can still do our part by praying for peace in the family and in the world. This week, try your best to be a peacemaker at home and at school. Don't forget to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Take some time too to soak in the peace of Christ by adoring Jesus in the Eucharist. In this way, you can go with the peace of Jesus to love and serve Him. Let us now listen to the story of a saint who through her words and actions inspired others to be like Jesus. St. Therese of the Child Jesus said, I am a very little soul who can only offer very little things to God. After God answered her prayers and sacrifices to convert a sinner, she continued praying and making sacrifices for more people to know Jesus. St. Therese joined the Carmelite sisters when she was just 15 years old. In the convent, she faithfully followed Jesus' words to love her neighbour. She cheerfully held an elderly sister who had trouble walking and smiled brightly at a sister she disliked. St. Therese was determined to offer these small sacrifices to God for people who needed Jesus the most. Her words and actions inspired people to become more like Jesus. When her friend used unkind words, St. Therese prayed to Jesus about how to tell her about it. She then courageously and gently talked with her friend about being a loving person. Her friend humbly promised to start a new way of life. And their friendship became even better. She also supported missionaries with her sincere prayers and wrote encouraging letters to them. St. Therese of the Child Jesus is a patron saint of missionaries and a great teacher of the Church. St. Therese of the Child Jesus showed us how we can love others, especially the people we dislike or who are unkind. Instead of being angry and arguing with them, she chose peace by smiling at them, praying for them and speaking to them gently. She is a role model for all of us. For this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments with us. We can't wait to see them. Now don't forget to share with us one thing you have learned today. Remember that a peacemaker shares the peace of Christ with others and they will know that we are children of God. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag CatholicMarsAtHome. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us about something that we will see at Mass later. What do you do at the end of a meal? Whether at home or in school, you clear your dishes so they can be cleaned and made ready for the next meal. You'll notice that Father does something similar after he gives up Holy Communion at Mass. First, he checks the pattern, the golden plate on which the host rested. If there are any particles there, he gently brushes them into the chalice. Next, Father purifies the chalice with water. He even dips his fingers into the water to capture any particles left on them. Then he consumes everything and dries the chalice with the purificator. But he's not done yet. He carefully folds the linens, making a little envelope with the square corporal to trap any particles which fell upon the cloth. At home, we would just toss the scraps into the dustbin. So why is Father so careful at the altar? We remember that every particle and drop of the sacred species is truly Jesus' body and blood. We treat the Eucharist with reverence and respect to show our love for Him. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the purification of the vessels. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent, and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. 
Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about the Beatitudes. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 18 October 2020. We offer up this Mass for all children that they may always remember that all they have comes from God and use their talents to serve God and His people. Join us in singing the processional hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome everyone to this Eucharist as we celebrate a very special day today. Do you know what day it is today that the church is celebrating? It's Mission Sunday. And so we are going to reflect on uh, what is our mission as Catholics in the church and in the world. And we also celebrate something really special, okay? So as we begin, I want to introduce you to somebody uh, really cool, okay? Now, I'd like to introduce you to St. Gerard. St. Gerard is a Redemptorist. And yesterday we celebrated his feast day. Uh, he is the patron saint of mothers and expectant mothers and children. So today we want to pray in a very special way for all our mothers and expected mothers and for all of you, for all families, okay? We offer and lift up everyone in a very special way today. And there's a very special story about St. Gerard because my parents named me after him. Uh, and they didn't know he was a redemptorist. And they didn't imagine that one day I would become a redemptorist myself. But that's, a, that's an amazing story in my life. So we call on his intercession, his presence and his prayers with us today. As we begin the Eucharist, we always remind ourselves of God's mercy, God who has been so kind and forgiving to us, and we give Him praise and thanks as we begin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to Cyrus, his chosen one, I have taken hold of your right hand to help you conquer nations and remove kings from power. City gates will open for you, not one will stay closed. Cyrus, you don't even know me, but I have called you by name and highly honoured you because of Jacob, my servant, and Israel, my chosen one. Only I am the Lord. There is no other God. I have made you strong though you don't know me. Now everyone from east to west will know that I am the Lord. No other gods are real. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace the Lord glory. Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church in Thessalonica, which is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Wishing you grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We always mention you in our prayers and thank God for you all, and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, worked for love, and persevered through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers, that God loves you and that you have been chosen, because when we brought the good news to you. It came to you not only as words, but as power, and as the Holy Spirit, and as utter conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went away to work out between them how to trap Jesus in what he said, and they sent their disciples to him, together with the Herodians, to say, Master. We know that you are an honest man and teach the way of God in an honest way, and that you are not afraid of anyone, because a man's rank means nothing to you. Tell us your opinion then. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar, or not? But Jesus was aware of their malice and replied, "You hypocrites." Why do you set a trap for me? Let me see the money you pay the tax with. They handed him a denarius, and he said, "Whose head is this? Whose name?" Caesar's. They replied. He then said to them, "Very well. Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God." The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. So, at the beginning of Mass, I was telling you about what the Church is celebrating this weekend, right? Do you remember? It is Mission Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Now, the first thing that we need to understand about Mission Sunday, because I assume everybody knows when Sunday is, but what is the meaning of mission? The word mission. Might have two different meanings, so let's take a look at each of those meanings.、Uh, mission means sent. Mission means to send somebody, so you are you are sent on a mission. You are sent on a mission to to go and do something. That's the first meaning of the word mission. Now, mission also has a second meaning, which can refer to a purpose or a reason or an objective. So every company, every organization, every group, every society has a particular mission, right? It exists for a certain reason. It exists to do something. So that can also be called a mission. Now let's take a couple of examples. Okay, let's start with an example we are all familiar with: the school. Almost all of you are going to school, right? So, what is the mission of a school? To give you knowledge, and skills, and values that will be helpful for you in your life. So that's the mission of the school to teach. Let's take a look at another organization that we are very familiar with. Let's look at the let's look at the MRT. You never really think of the MRT as being a mission, no? But the MRT has a purpose, definitely. 
purpose of the MRT is to provide transportation to the masses, to ordinary people like you and me, because we need to go to work, we need to go to school, we need to go out, we need to come home, we need to go to church. So we need to have a transportation system that is affordable for everybody. That is the purpose, the mission of the MRT. Okay, good. So what is the purpose and the mission of the church? And this one is not so easy. Eh? We have to think very carefully about what the mission of the church is. Now, lots of people think that the church is all about organizing masses and catechism class. And now that we can't go to church for mass, the mission of the church is to film all these masses and upload it online. Is that all? Is that all the mission of the church is? There's much more, right? Okay. So most of us know that the church organizes masses, we have catechism class, we do weddings, we do funerals, we have RCIA, RCIY. Uh, we also have groups like the youth group, the altar servers that young people can join. So when you go to a church, there are so many things that are happening, so many activities that are going on in the church. But is the mission of the church simply organizing activities inside the church for ourselves? Is that what the mission is? Remember, the mission, the word mission also means sent. So we cannot just spend all our time inside the church hanging out with each other. We are also sent. And if we are sent, it means that we have to get out. Get out of the church. After mass, that is. After the mass, you get out of the church. We have to go out. And go out and do what? We have to go out and share the good news of Jesus. Now, how do we share the good news of Jesus with others? This is another difficult question. Now, often we think that if we want to talk to people about Jesus, we have to preach. That's what I'm doing now. I'm a redemptorist and redemptorists preach a lot. We are trained to preach and we do that a lot. So on Monday, are you going to go to school stand up in front of all of your friends in the class and start preaching a sermon about Jesus. And while you're preaching the sermon, all your friends will be so enlightened that they'll all want to become Catholics. Uh, most likely your friends will think that you're mad. Okay, maybe we'll try some other way. Maybe we'll invite them to come to church and then I can do the preaching. Okay, so how do you invite them to church? Maybe you can ask them at least 10 to 15 times a day, come to my church come to my church, I want to invite you to my church, come to my church next Sunday, please come to my church. You can keep saying that to your friends all the time. Uh, they'll get tired of you and probably don't want to hang out with you anymore. So how can we share the good news of Jesus with them? By our witness. So what does it mean to witness? It means that we make friends with people we talk to them, we care for them, and we do that because that's what Jesus did for us and that's what Jesus told us to do for others. And when we do that, then people will see what we do and they will realize that we don't just believe in Jesus, that we don't just talk about Jesus, we don't just say that we are Catholic, but we actually do what Jesus taught us to do. And when your friends see you acting in this way, being friends with them and caring for them and helping them, they might ask you, how come you're like that? Why are you such a good person? Why do you care for others? Why do you help others all the time? Why are you friends with everybody? And you say, I do this because I follow the teaching of Jesus in my life. And then they might say to you, wow, that's really interesting. Tell me a little bit more about this person, Jesus, who is so inspiring to you. And then you can invite them to church. Now that is mission. That is what we are sent to do. St. Paul, in the second reading that we read today from his letter to the Thessalonians, reminds us that God has chosen you and God has sent you and God has given you 
the Holy Spirit. You have received the good news of Jesus and you know Him and you love Him and you want to live like Him. And now we are sent on this mission to go and share the story of Jesus with others. So we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, we approach the Lord with our prayers and petitions, not seeking to entrap Him, but with conviction. For we know that towards the rising and setting of the sun, there is none besides Him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they may continue to proclaim God's word and the teachings of the Church without fear or favour. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, that God may raise up leaders like Cyrus, grasping their right hand, giving them light and power to make decisions that promote life justice, morality, and the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the elderly, the unborn, the handicapped, and all who give us reason and the chance to be compassionate, that we may always have hearts that are sensitive and respectful of all life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have succumbed to increased gambling, drinking or violence during the pandemic, that they break free from these destructive habits, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, everything we are and have is yours. Renew us in your love so that we may serve you with humility and generosity. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Joyful.
sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall. So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of communion together with Pope Francis, Bishop William, and with all the faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, 
with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Gerard and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray now together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So Lord Jesus Christ, we gather today and we wish that this Eucharist that we could partake of your flesh and your blood. 
but we are far away and we cannot do that in a physical way. But you are present in us, you are present in our minds, in our bodies and in our souls. And we ask you to come and be with us. Be with us and be with our families. Bless us with your presence. Amen. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and be prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you everyone for being with us at this Mass. And we pray in a very special way for all the ministers in our church, right? Because today we celebrate Mission Sunday. We, we live lift them up to the Lord. But also it's a reminder to us the mission that God is sending us to do, right? To share the story of Jesus with others. And remember, we were also uh, calling upon the intercession of St. Gerard to pray for all of our mothers and the expected mothers and all children and families. We know that he's praying for all of us. Okay. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. And we
The COVID-19 pandemic has been a time of adjustment and embracing of change. In our society, work, relationships, and in the way we practice our faith. We had to adapt. We stayed mostly at home. We prayed where and when we could. We went online for our masses, for spiritual communion, to watch and listen to our shepherds preach and share their love with us, and to partake in the many events and programs the church had put online. It was an opportunity for us as a church to reflect on our vulnerabilities and to respond to challenges. To meet the needs of the new normal, we need to build on the digitization of our church. Not just in online masses and a registration system for mass resumption, but across the archdiocese and the parishes in the conduct of the many programs. In catechesis, in building community life, in growing strong families, in empowering our youth and leaders, and spreading the saving love of our Lord Jesus Christ. More than just digitization, the many existing archdiocese and organizations and new organizations such as the Catholic Leadership Center, Catholic Preschool Education and projects like the Catholic Hub need to take on new initiatives as they adjust to ensure that the church stays relevant in the new normal. In 2021, let us approach the 200th anniversary of the Catholic Church in Singapore with a new mindset. Let us reflect on the many sacrifices that have come before us. Let us not only celebrate our past, but let us mobilize for the present and build for the next generation. This season calls for all of us to be open to change, alternatives and innovation and as one people seek to build new capacity and capabilities to continue to pass on the light that Christ has given to us. Freely we have received, freely give. Let us give of our time, treasures and talents to build a vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. To build our church today for tomorrow. Visit catholicfoundation.sg Be a giver. Humanitarian work of the Church is part and parcel of the Gospel. And so I invite you all to help the vulnerable, the low-income, the migrant community, and also with Caris, we have 20 organizations serving the poor all over the world, especially in Asia. And there are so many requests. Huh? They have received $11 million of requests. Um, it is difficult to explain how, how life is hard and sometimes dangerous for many families. And actually, this is a situation that we can find in many cities in, in Southeast Asia. Many people are struggling. Uh, we didn't have any preventive materials such as masks, uh, gloves, uh, hand gels, soap, the tissues, trash cans. Uh, many migrant workers from the abroad, they came back and they lose their job, they, you know, more work. The situation of COVID-19 pandemic has affected many of our students' families. The mototaxi drivers, the tuk-tuk drivers, daily earners, all lost their job. Even the factory workers, they have lost their job because all the factories are closed down.
the people in the squatter area uh, don't fear to die of uh, COVID-19. They fear to die of hunger. They have no food, they have no means in order to survive. We have to do whatever we need to bring what they need in order for them to survive. It's so important to ask the help of God for these people, not to uh, fall into despair, but to, to see the light of hope. And we, all of us, we can be the instrument of this hope. So we are counting on you. Thank you very much. The request for support and aid is growing greater by the day. In this humanitarian crisis, your urgent donation can help to save many lives. It's very important to let them feel that they are not forgotten, that there are people who are taking care of them. Uh, it's something that tells them they need to feel that they are not alone, that they are not abandoned. God loves a cheerful giver. When you give, uh, give with a happy heart, a joyful heart. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Amid the COVID-19 global pandemic, may we unite to feed the hungry so that we may be a light in the time of darkness. Let's make hope happen. Donate today. CARIS, Caritas Humanitarian Aid and Relief Initiatives in Singapore. For details on how you can donate and help in other ways, visit makehopehappen.caris-singapore.org.